Even after all that has happened, he still has the defiance to seek out a horn of Svartal fame's finest. Sindri was captured while sneaking outside. He was dragged in here for interrogation. His belongings were seized. Even his roasted acorns, one of the many dwarven delicacies I will never fathom. They tried to loosen his tongue, using the same sweet mead he himself sought. 
almost drowned him in it. But the shelter has not been raided. So Sindri must have remained strong and refused to give them its location. Instead, he was dragged away. Bloodied. Drunk as a fish. But alive. Most likely to face further tortures at a makeshift prison named Jan's Hoos. That is where I should go next. upon Loki, no matter his crimes. It's like the century was brought here many days ago. I hope I'm not too late.
like are with the Hoogers of so many races. Moosevel, a Jotun, dwarf. Who knows what else? It cannot be. Is this Sindri, noblest of dwarves? Chance led to Sindri's capture. But the nature of his death, that was not chance. When the enemy realized they had such a prize in their clutches. Who is this you bring? No! It can't be! Master Broker, I share in your grief. Truly I do. Your brother was the worthiest of dwarfs. More so than you will ever know. Oh, Sindri. No. No, my dear Sindri. The funeral arrangements are being made outside. I must use this chance to bend the broker to my will. I must speak with broker. Find a way to ease Broker's sorrow. You lied to me. You said you would save him. I said I would find him. That ain't my brother. Not anymore. What happened? Tell me. Everything. As I neared the village, I... I heard a great roar. Like that of a wounded bear. Soon after, I witnessed the final act of a mighty battle. Sindri beset by giants on all sides. It was he who made the godlike roars. He... He always did have a deep voice. He wielded his hammer and chisel with uncommon skill. Yes! Yes! I've seen him do it many times in the workshop! Giants lay strewn about, slain by Sindri's hand. Oh. But then... One of cowardly aspect struck your brother treacherously in the back. Yet even as Sindri succumbed to the blow, he lobbed his chisel and struck the coward dead, right between the eyes. Sindri did all that? So it will be written. I must find a way to ease Broker's sorrow. And make him amenable to my wishes. Where could they be? There's something wrong, Basil. Everything is wrong. We're burying the greatest smith who ever lived, and we don't have his tools to put with him. I came across some at Ailthorpe. If you want, I can fetch... Those are just the spares. He never took his best ones from the shelter. I see. How is it that such valuable instruments have been misplaced? Misplaced? Don't be daft. Hidden, more like. By Sindri? To make sure no one else ever touched them. Particularly Broker. Except now we can't find them. You have no idea where they might be. Well, they're inside the shelter, I can tell you that. Well, they can't be too far. I'd be surprised if they're somewhere up high. I thought dwarves were afraid of heights. Not our Sindri. He was quite the climber. Now me, well, I prefer to keep my feet on the ground right where they should be. I am 
very fond of the dwarves, yet their constant needs is exhausting. Oh, Loki, friend, betrayer, what I'd give for a moment of your gilded conversation, even the lies. It's all alone. The disaster has been averted. Oh, now I see why some call you God. You're making me blush. Still, I have my moments. Heroes die, but not their legacy. Such was Sindri's courage that tonight he feasts in Valhalla, the first of his kind to ever do so. I'm here for the mead, not the company. You dwarves and your love of mead. It's cost me enough trouble already. It wasn't the dwarf who ransacked half of Jotunheim in search of some mysterious mead. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. You know, old friend, now would be a good time for some grand gesture. Like what? A respectful speech from you. Sindri's greatest rival would surely... Ah, oh, fuck off. We must all make compromises. I can even give you the honeyed words. Time soothes the well of suffering. Brings hope that sees beyond chill death. Recast the whirlpool of sorrow into the placid waters of the philosophic mind. Are those words for Sindri or Baldur? Baldur lives. Why would he need such words? Of course, of course. I, I, I didn't mean to... 
Well, you know. Fine, I'll do the speech. But it will be one of my making, not yours. We dwarves don't care much for poetry. Still, we can't set about making speeches until the torches are all lit up. Ivaldi has come. Perhaps he can be of use. <laughs> How can I talk with you when my heart is torn asunder? My brother, a true master. He was, uh, I did not like Sindri, and he did not like me. Still, he was good with the hammer, and the chisel, and the saw. And he knew how to work the bellows. Some said better than anyone. Even me. <laughs> Broker, your brother was a very fine smithy. I... I admired him greatly. Mm. 
Master Broker, you've given Sindri an excellent send-off. It's the least he deserves. But is it really true he feasts in Valhalla? It is. I saw it in a vision. Come. Let's take a stroll. Now, tell me, are you prepared to continue Sindri's good work? Helping Ivaldi was not my brother's work. But the fine suitor was. It's what got him killed. Greed for mead is what got him killed. It took courage to go after that mead. A direct challenge to Sutra's authority. This is crooked thinking. Seems straight enough to me. You know, I don't reckon I owe you a bloody thing. I risked my life to retrieve your brother's body. Now I prepare to risk it again. For you and all of Svatalfheim. Bollocks! You ain't doing anything out of the goodness of your art. I know what you're after. I know all about your lad Balder. I have ears, you know, even in my grief. So, don't pretend you're here for us, because I know- Would you have me abandon my own son and strive only for your salvation? Okay, when you say it like that. I, uh, I need time. I'm still grieving, you know? Let me think on it, all right? A little old think. tools you'll ever lay eyes on. Good to see you're getting along. So, Broker, do you accept your duty? Don't have much choice, do I? Last thing I need is a godly smiting up me ass. <laughs> Let this be the start of a beautiful new friendship. <sighs> to study the Salakar, I'll need the very best of tools. Too bad this workshop is lacking. Bugger off! I got more stuff here than you can wag a finger at. Doubt it. <gasps> if you find something you don't know how to use, just ask. <laughs> I'll be giving you lessons on how to use your Bickering own... Bickering dwarves. How unusual. Asa, you return. What? You deal with a fire nymph? Not this again. What news do you bring? My stepmother is stubborn. I cannot push too hard or she will grow suspicious. She has no interest in a trade. Interest, yes. But not yet the will. I don't understand. The Salakar is all but indestructible. You, on the other hand, are not. She assumes she'll catch me, kill me, and retrieve the Salakar. Time is on her side. 
Then I must strip her of this illusion. If I were to make a nuisance of myself, one that cannot be ignored. Sinmara prepares to lead my father's next major invasion. But if I were to disrupt her plans, it may force her to the bargaining table. Sounds risky to me. I once plotted and carried out the murder of Emir himself. What do I care of risk? Well, since you put it like that... Where must I strike? At Af Alvat Milna. My stepmother develops a strange army. At Jofrsmida, she breeds beasts of war. And finally, there's Drekathorp, her supplies hub. I've dealt with Af Alvat Milna, but not the other two. She builds a fresh army at Afalvat Milna. It too must be ended. In the meantime, I shall return to Aetri. I will send word once my stepmother has become more... amenable. I'll return when I'm done. And I will expect answers regarding the Salakar. stores her precious supplies. Come on. 
Circle the area, Sunan. Sin Mara creates a